Forking mainnet is a huge Solidity development cheat code that no one talks about. In a moment, I'll tell you why you can't be a DeFi developer without it. I'll show you the code for how to do it, and I'll show you how to prevent an unintuitive bug that's likely to pop up. Forking allows you to simulate the same state as Ethereum mainnet, but on your local development environment, like Hardhat. That means you can interact with all deployed contracts on mainnet, and their variable values will be the same as on mainnet, but you won't need to waste real Ether to do it. And why do you need this? Well, not all decentralized apps use testnets, and I'm looking at you, Curve. For example, Curve Finance does not maintain any testnets, unlike, say, Uniswap. It's not apparent from the docs, but if you go through their Discord server chat, they will tell you that the core dev team doesn't maintain any testnets, and that if you want to test your code against Curve without spending real ether to do it, then you need to fork mainnet. Now let's get into how to do that. Forking mainnet is easier than you think. If you open up hardhat.config.js that gets created when you start a new hardhat project, you just need to modify it like this. I've added a default network as hardhat, and then inside networks, hardhat, and forking, I've added a URL. In order to pull the current state of mainnet, you're going to want to use a service like Alchemy and provide the Alchemy URL to the URL key here. Your URL will look something like this comment that I've written, except you'll be using your own key. I have my own Alchemy URL with the key interpolated in my .env file, which I obviously don't want to show because it's private. And I'm pulling that URL using .env which I've imported up here. If you don't know how to do that, ask me in the comments. It's also possible to peg the local state to a historic Ethereum block. So you can work with Ethereum like it was at some point in the past, which is pretty cool. And once we've modified this, all we need to do is start up our hardhat node. So I'll do that here with npx hardhat node. And we can test that it's working properly by curling to the port that our local hardhat environment is running on. Here's the curl command. And if we run that, I'll provide this in the description, by the way, we get this response. And this response has a result, and the result has a hex value. Now, if you copy that and you convert it to a number, I'm going to do that with rapidtables.com. We get this value and we can compare this value to the latest block number um, in a service like etherscan so the latest block is 15122173 and we got 15122164 so it's it's slightly delayed but at least the latest block in our local environment is extremely close to the latest block that's on ethereum mainnet right now now let's write some code to interact with this local fork of mainnet. So I've created a file here, which I've named tutorial.js. The name doesn't matter, and I've imported ethers.js because that's how we interact with the blockchain. I've imported Axios because we'll need to make some requests to etherscan to get the ABI of a contract that we're going to be working with. I've required .m to import some environment variables, and then I've set up a few more variables here. I've set up my provider. This is your regular ethers.js provider. And I've pointed it to my local port where I have hard hat running. I have the address for the wrapped ether contract here. I have an address for a curve finance pool here. And then I have a URL that makes a request to etherscan and requests the ABI for a specific address that we pass in. And in this case, I passed in curve will want the ABI for that. Now I have a function here, main, and since we don't have any UI associated with this app, we can't just connect MetaMask like we normally do when we're building a dApp. But what we can do is still connect our wallet by calling new.ethers.wallet and passing in our wallet secret, and then connecting that wallet to the provider that we set up above. 
Now, this is not your Ethereum mainnet wallet secret. This is simply the secret for one of the wallets that was generated when you started Hardhat locally. And we can see those here for each of the wallets that was generated. They have an address, but they also have a secret key. And once we've done that, we can start interacting with contracts in our forked mainnet. First, let's keep it simple and let's call a read method on the wrapped ether contract. Here I'm importing an ABI for um, an ERC20 contract because wrapped ether is an ERC20 contract and I've just hard coded that in another file. I can provide that in the description if you like. I've provided this in a number of my different tutorials. Here we initialize the wrapped ether contract like usual and then on that contract we call .name and then we'll console.log that so that we can see if it prints out the right value. And I'm expecting it to return wrapped ether or something like that. Let's save this and let's run this in the terminal. And the file is called tutorial.js. We run that and it made a request to the contract and it returned wrapped ether, which is the name so it's working. And if you look at your hard hat logs, and scroll to the bottom, you can see that that request was not made to mainnet. That was actually made locally. One of the weird things about a forked mainnet is that you'll often see unrecognized contract, but don't worry about that. Second, let's increase the complexity a little bit by calling a write method on the same contract. So here we connect to the wrapped ether contract with our wallet that we defined above. And then we'll call approve, like when we approve a contract to access tokens in our wallet. And we're going to approve the curve address, the curve contract, to have access to tokens in our wallet. And we're going to approve 0 0.01 wrapped ether. Then we'll wait for that transaction to complete and we'll print the block number just to make sure that it went through all right. Let's save this and let's run it again. And here we have the block number, so we know that worked. Lastly, let's call some methods on a more complicated contract. We'll call them directly on a Curve Finance swap pool. To do that, we'll need to initialize the Curve Finance pool contract. But to do that, we need an ABI. And to get the ABI, we're going to make a request with Axios to the URL um, that we defined above for Etherscan. And that allows us to pull down the ABI for that curve contract. And then we'll pass that in as the ABI when we initialize the curve contract locally. Then we're gonna call two functions. We're gonna call owner to get the owner of that pool. And then we're also gonna call fee to get the fee of that pool. And here is where some people run into some problems. Even though this is a read method, if you call this, without passing in a gas limit, you're going to get an error. If you find the video you're watching helpful, do me a huge favor. Scroll down to the thumbs up, give it a click, and then hit subscribe. It helps keep me motivated to keep making awesome and in-depth blockchain tutorials to help you out. Now back to writing code. And that's a little unintuitive. So here I'm passing in a gas limit for both of them, and then we're going to console.log the values that come back below. Let's run this. And we get the address of the owner, and we get the fee as a hex value. And that's all there is to it. It's really easy with Hardhat to fork Ethereum mainnet and then test your code against that, rather than needing to waste Ether to test against mainnet. And this is especially important if what you're testing against is not deployed on a testnet. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you next time.